Welcome to our demonstration on Data Services Manager version 2.0. In this demonstration, we're going to look at a core component of Data Services Manager, which is infrastructure policies. And infrastructure policies are essentially a way of vSphere administrators controlling which resources are being used for data services that are being deployed via Data Services Manager. So let's begin. First thing to want to show you is that with DSM 2.0, there is in fact a plugin. And we can look at the plugin in the vSphere client by going to the administration section, solutions, client plugins, as shown here. And you can see that the data services manager plugin is deployed and enabled. What that means is that there's some new contexts in the vSphere client. Go to our inventory and we go to vCenter server, configure. See now that there's a new section here called Data Services Manager, which is provided by that plugin. Now, one of the things in here is infrastructure policies. There's a few of these infrastructure policies already created. However, before you can build an infrastructure policy, there's a couple of other things that need to be created in advance. One of these is IP pools. Now, there's no support for DHCP with Data Services Manager, but what you do need to do is create an IP pool. And we can actually do that. Even though there's one created already, let's create another one. Let's just call this demo. What you do is you give it an IP address range. We'll just make one up for the purposes of this demonstration. And we'll use the 192.168.1 range. Give it a subnet prefix. So for a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, that prefix will be 24. And then you can give it a, well, I should probably change that range and give that as a gateway. There we go. So there's our demo IP pool range in there as well. Another concept is a VM class. Now we do come with some t-shirt size VM classes. These are the sizes of the virtual machines that get deployed to host the data services. You can see the small, medium, large. And again, you can go ahead and create uh, one of your own like I'm showing here. So I could just make one up like so and make a really extra large one if you wish to use something of that size. But we think the small, medium, large will cover most eventualities. There's also a permissions section. You can see I have a bunch of permissions in here already. These are essentially the user accounts when you wish to go and access the data services manager UI. So you can create your own DSM users, I'll show you one here, and you can set the role as either an admin or a user within data services manager. Similarly, you could add LDAP. You can see I'm using LDAP here, and you can define the LDAP groups, which fall into uh, different sections as well, such as a, an administrator group and a user group. Um, there's some additional LDAP settings here as well, uh, just to show you how to access or what fields you're using for accessing LDAP. And then if there was any upgrades to do, of course, this is just being released, so uh, there are none at the moment. Oh, maybe there is, but let's come back to that later. So we want to go ahead and build an infrastructure policy. Let's give it a name. Let's just call it demo. You can give some optional description there. And you can also um, enable or disable this policy. So if you're not ready to use this infrastructure policy just yet, you can leave it disabled, but by default, it is enabled. Have some compute resources. You can see that these match up the resources that we have in uh, under the control of vCenter here. There's a single data center with two clusters, and I can choose to add either one or more of those into the infrastructure policy. So in this particular case, I'm just going to include cluster B. Now there's also an option of selecting resource pools. So you can see that as well, and you can decide to add resource pools as part of the infrastructure policy, but let's stick with cluster for the moment. And we now get all of the storage policies that are available in cluster uh, B that we've just selected. And you can see there's a bunch of vSAN policies in here because I am using vSAN. 
and I'll just stick with the vSAN default storage policy for this infrastructure policy. What network am I going to plumb my data services up onto? So you can choose whatever of these distributed port groups that are available. I will just put them onto this uh, VLAN 51 that I have. Now we come to the IP pool. So here's the demo IP pool. You can see that there's the pool that already existed, 22 out of the 35 IP addresses are already being consumed. So I might just choose to, to select this demo one, which is actually uh, completely free. You can then decide which of your folders you want to put. So if you have folders pre-created and you want to put the um, data services that you're deploying into specific folders, you can select that here. And then of course, selecting a VM class. Now, the interesting thing about a VM class and also about the storage policies that we saw previously is you could select multiples. So I could select a large, medium and small here. And when I come around to creating a data service through the DSM UI later, I will have the option of selecting any of these VM classes for my database and data services. Similarly, with the uh, storage classes, uh, or the, the storage policies, I beg your pardon. The same thing applies. I could select multiple storage policies when building the infrastructure policy, and then I would choose one of those storage policies when creating my data service. And the same goes for the network uh, port groups as well. I could put multiple network port groups into my infrastructure policy, and I would just select one of those when it comes to deploying the uh, data service. However, for the purposes of uh, this demonstration, I'm just going to go with a single storage policy. I'm just going to go with a single network port group, but I am going to choose multiple VM classes to give a choice for the size of the VMs that are created. So you can have a look back, I'll go through all of this, it looks good, and then go ahead and create the policy. And it's as simple as that, the policy is now created, you can see it here, policy demo, see the compute resources, the storage policy, the network port group that we selected, the IP pool that we selected, the folder that we selected, and last but not least, the virtual machine classes that we selected. And that concludes the demo on how to create an infrastructure policy for VMware Data Services Manager version 2.0.